It's personal between me you, and I'm going to do you some serious harm, you big stiff idiot. Okay. Canelo exposed by Bivol probably presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of Canelo exposed by Bivol subscribers. Now, I wanted to talk about Sergey Kovalev and his uh, cruiserweight debut a little bit because it was it was a, it was a great performance. You know, first of all, let me let me first start off by saying masterclass performance by Sergey Kovalev. Uh, that was a great way to relaunch your career and show the world that you still have one of the best jabs in boxing. And, and I, and I want to give a lot of credit also because a lot of times when fighters lose, they get credit and the trainers don't get credit. But when the fighters uh, win, the trainers, the trainers don't get no credit. So let me also give credit to Buddy McGirt, a guy that really has uh, a good chemistry and a good relationship with Kovalev. And Kovalev listens to him. That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Kovalev listens to Buddy McGirt. And I was, you know, uh, credit to him for a good game plan last night against Tabel Pulev. But listen, man, Sergey Kovalev fought a guy last night, first cruiserweight, uh, coming in on, on about two and a half year um, absence from the ring. So obviously, ring rust is going to be a, 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 a big factor um, for him. And then also factoring in that he's fighting bigger guys. So he necessarily couldn't be the crusher. He couldn't go in there and be the guy that, like, fought Jean Pascal and. Slava Shabransky and, 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 and these kind of guys. He had, to, he had to go in there and be a guy that relied solely on his boxing skills. And that's the intriguing thing about Kovalev at Cruzway. Because um, he boxed Tavel Pulev easily. You know, with a lot of, throwing a lot of feints, throwing a lot of double feints, a lot of up jabs, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, jab right hands and right hand jabs. He would, he would, he would throw the one-two and then he would invert the combination. So sometimes be the one-two. Then it'd be the 2-1. Sometimes it was the, the faint up jab, the faint. Sometimes it was the double faint 1-2. Sometimes it was the double faint 2-1 combination. But he, he boxed brilliantly. And I don't think he lost more than a round to that fight. I I, I, had, I personally scored it a shutout. So I, I really think if Kovalev is going to win a cruiserweight title, this is going to be his route to doing that. He's not going to be a guy that goes in there and knocks people out. He's not going to be there and, uh, and be a guy that... Uh, uh, blows guys out in three, four rounds. I think for him, if you're someone who enjoys pure boxing skills, this is where you're going to really enjoy Kovalev's career because now that he's fighting bigger guys, stronger guys, guys who punch harder, um, now he has to rely on uh, the more, his more nuanced skills of boxing more so than his power to get over the hump and, and, and win fights and put himself in a position to become a champion in this weight class. You know what I'm saying? Um... Now Kovalev in the post fight review uh, in the post fight interview he said himself like he was worried going in about his ring rust because that's always a worry when you haven't been in the ring as long as he has but he was worried about his ring rust and then he also went on to say that um, he feels like he needs to lose six, six to seven pounds more to really be performing at his best at his optimal performance so he he said he he, he was very honest and very forthcoming he said look I'm not ready for no cruiserweight champions don't expect one next. I need another, another like tune up fight to get more rounds and, and lose this weight and get match fit and match sharp. But he said after that, I want them champions. I want I want them top guys. And you know, the cruiserweight division is a division that a lot of people seem to overlook and, and not, not even care about. But I think with a with a when you have a guy like Sergey Kovalev who has who was at one point the number two pound pound fighter in the world, who was at one point, you know, a uh, unified light heavyweight champion. A guy that was looked at to be by some people at, 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 a, at a particular moment in history the best fighter in boxing. When you get a guy like that moving to cruiserweight, it, it puts more eyeballs on the cruiserweight division and it makes it more of an exciting place. And mind you, look, when, when we look at the champions at cruiserweight, like Makabu, like Arsene Goulamarian, like uh, Marius Breedis, like Lawrence Coley, I mean... That's not exactly a murderer's row of champions. That, 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 that isn't exactly like the light heavyweight division where you got guys like Bivol, Better B. Evan Smith. You know, that's a lot, that's a lot stronger than the cruiserweight. Uh, Okoli, I don't think, will be there much longer at, at, at cruiserweight because he's already made enough defenses. He's looking for that Breedis fight, and he's going to get up on out of there. And if he can't get that fight, he's going to get out of there. Um, Makabu, he's old, and his power is gone, um, being honest. Golamirian, I don't know a whole lot about, but from what I've heard, he's just nothing more than a solid fighter. So Kovalev can win a world title in this weight class. It's just all about, you know, when he gets to his best, how durable will he be when he fights a guy who really punches him in his shit? Because to be honest with you, right, Tavel Pulev 
did nothing. You would think for a guy with as much amateur experience as him, I believe he even medaled in the Olympics, you, you would think for a guy with his amateur experience, a uh, uh, 16-0 coming in, albeit against, you know, uh, not, that, not that good competition in uh, uh, Bulgaria and Belgium and all these different countries. But that's besides the point. You, you would think a guy with that much boxing experience will come to the USA and, and be a little bit more hungry and have a little bit more urgency. But that, that wasn't the case for, um, that wasn't the case at all for, um, for Tyrell Pulev. And it was really, really disappointing. But all, all in all, look, Sergey Kovalev looked great. Feints, jabs, right hands, everything is still there. The tools are still firmly in the toolbox. They haven't left. The jab is still one of the best in boxing, and uh, we'll definitely see uh, more, and we'll get a better barometer of where Kovalev's at the next time we see him fight um, at Cruiserweight. But look, let's give this man some credit today, all right? This guy has been under a lot of scrutiny over the last three years. I mean, I thought I still think to this day he, he took a dive in the, in the Canelo fight, but that's just my opinion. But let's still give him some credit. This is a guy that was out of the ring for damn near three years. He's pushing almost 40 years old. He's 39 years old right now. He'll be 40 any day now. He moved up to a cruiserweight, a, a, a weight class, which is what, like, um, you know, a bigger weight class off of, uh, you know, inactivity. And he beat an undefeated guy. I know the undefeated guy wasn't that good or whatever, but still, to do that at the professional level of boxing is not something you want to just, you know, stick your nose up and scoff at. That, that, that takes talent. That takes drive, dedication. And Kovalev still seems to have a little bit of it left. So we're going to see what happens with Kovalev as things progress. And I'm looking very forward to seeing the, the, the cruiserweight crusher. In action as he continues to uh, put that final stamp on his career before he before he retires in boxing. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What did you think of Kovalev's performance against Tavel Pulev if you watched it? And how far do you think he can go in the cruiserweight division? And if you think he can be a champion, which one of the champions do you think he could beat? Leave all that in the comments down below. Make sure you guys hit a time to subscribe. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your ass. Thank you for watching another video on True School Sports, the home of boxing. If you made it this far, do me a favor and do yourself a damn favor. Hit that subscribe button and surely you will not be disappointed. You know, True School Sports bringing you the latest and greatest, the untouchable, you know, boxing content, interviews, news videos, breakdowns, live fight reaction extravaganza. We've got a great community of, of people here. Boxing fans all over the world from America to the UK to Australia and on and on and on. So join the empire today. Hit that subscribe button. Take care and God.